Hello, indie gaming fans. Are you a fan of Westerns? How about sci-fi? Well, today, I'm the ex-hardcore gamer, and I'm going to be talking to you about Tombstar on PC. The game of Tombstar gets its name because it takes place on a once peaceful planet known as Tombstar. The story goes that everybody was happy on this planet and living a nice, quiet life until the evil Grimheart gang showed up and ruined everything. They took over the planet and stripped it of all its resources, killing anybody who stood in their way. There's a literal graveyard of all the people that have tried to stop them, but now we have three heroes that are stepping up and are going to be the ones to actually do it for some reason. For those of you that are hoping for a story heavy game, this is not going to be it because after that cutscene, the rest of the story is just going to be told through little bits of text that you find littered throughout the levels. Tombstar is a very fast paced twin stick shooter and a lot of the design decisions that were made show that they wanted to keep that pace going briskly. While the game does eventually allow you to pick from three different characters to play as, you will start off only being able to play as Jack Galloway, and this is the character that will take you through the tutorial in the first few levels until you unlock the others. Each character has their own different stats, starting weapons, dodging moves, and ultimate abilities. This makes for each character to play differently enough that you'll actually want to play as each one of them, or at least find the one that suits your playstyle most. The levels are set up to be randomly generated rooms much like many other dungeon run type games. Every single time you play, it's going to be different and you never quite know what's going to be in the next room. Once you walk through the entry way there will be a fog of war that will be lifted and reveal what's up in front of you. Sometimes it's a room full of enemies that need to be cleared out before it unlocks and you can move on, or sometimes it's going to be some much needed upgrades. Once a room clears, not only is it unlocked for you to be able to move on, but you will also be dropped some sort of item that will help out whether it be money, upgrade chips, or maybe even some health. Another great feature that keeps things moving quickly is that once you complete a room, then you unlock that room's teleporter. Essentially, once you're out of combat, you can teleport to any room that you've previously gone to. Since the level layouts are randomly generated, sometimes you may find yourself far away from where you need to go next because you've hit a dead end. Now, you just simply tap a button and you can warp right to another room. Another mechanic with speed in mind is the fact that once you complete a room and you are out of combat, your character will automatically start sprinting. It is an option that can be turned off, but I found this was very useful and helped keep things moving along. As with other roguelike games, you will be able to collect perks that will help you out and give you different abilities in the game, and they can be upgraded with the previously mentioned upgrade chips. But also like other games in the genre, once you die you will lose all of your perks and whatever weapons that you're holding. But you also will level up as you play through the game, which does not make your character stronger per se, but it does unlock the ability to have more weapons and perks to pick from. Leveling up to certain points will also grant you green gems, which will allow you to buy things in the badge shop. The badges are permanent upgrades that can be equipped to your character, of which you can have up to three and they can be shared between the characters. As it stands right now, there are a total of 12 different badges that can be unlocked based on what level you hit and they'll give you things like the chance of having a key to return to you, starting with an extra heart, or maybe even a longer duration for your ultimate ability. As you progress in the game and you find different abilities that you like, you may choose to instead use your green gems to upgrade them and make them even stronger instead of unlocking new ones. Fans of roguelike games will find all of this pretty much familiar to them, but anybody who is not a fan, this game also won't be changing your mind. It's definitely a fun play and it's fast paced, but you are going to die a lot and it's more about trying to keep playing enough runs to level up to unlock new things, versus actually just trying to get through the whole game in one run. Eventually, you will be able to get to that point where you can do that, but don't expect it to be anytime soon. Tombstar thankfully gives you the choice of being able to use either mouse and keyboard for controls or just using a standard controller as well, and both felt very comfortable and easy to use. Despite a story about a king coming in and destroying an entire planet and killing anybody getting in his way, the graphics are a very cartoony nature with a little blocky style to go along with it as well. I found that the graphics looked and ran great, and thankfully, due to the cartoony nature, it's not very demanding on your system. It only requires a GTX 760, and even the recommended is the now over 6-year-old GTX 1080. On my RTX 2060, I had no problems running the game at well over 100 frames per second consistently at the 2K resolution with all the settings at maximum. Just as Tombstar is a mixture of genres as well as settings, so goes with the soundtrack. It's going to mix the sounds of trying to be like a soundtrack to an old spaghetti western, 
but also has some futuristic sounding electronic type music. While it definitely works and fits the game, it's not something that I'd find myself wanting to listen to outside of playing it. There were even times that I felt like I didn't really need to even be listening and I would put something else on instead. It's definitely unique and it's hard to compare to anything else, but the closest I can come to is kind of an odd, outdated reference. If you remember the old Rammstein song Engel, it sounds similar to that where you have some whistling mixed with electronic music. While Tombstar won't be getting the Golden Genie Lamp Award, it is definitely something that still is a lot of fun and easy to recommend to fans of the genre. If you like being able to play a twin stick shooter and having lots of stuff to unlock, then this is a good game for you. We thank you so much for supporting clickbait-free content here at I Dream of Indie. We can't possibly make it without you. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors that support this channel through channel memberships. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Adriana Amato, CJR, Julian Colbus, Ray Lynn, Marky Min, Dave Harp, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Christian Cruz, PSC, Solarusi, and Chic Geek. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Nathan Moore, Skepticism, Mitchell Hall, Jen Rose, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beef Arenis, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian Mind, Lord Metroid, Sequoil, and Larkison. Thank you so much for all that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.